Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another great episode of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. It's episode 177. I'm Darren Saul, your host. I'm here with the fantastic Joe McKee, and we're going to be chatting all about our favorite topic, copywriting. And the, the, day, the title of today is Copywriting Made Easy. So, Joe, welcome. Well, thanks for having me on, Daryl. It's my really nice pleasure. To be here. My absolute pleasure. Now, copywriting is something that is so important these days. I mean, we're all digital content creators, you know, and marketing has turned into digital content creation. So, as solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, large companies, we all need to know how to create content and how to write copy. Mm, it's so definitely. important. Um, but before we get into the discussion, I thought let's give everybody a little bit more of an intro and a rundown into who Jo is and what she does. So Jo McKee runs Copywriting for Profit, training small business team members to write irresistible ads, sales pages and marketing emails so that they can make more money. She has worked on a number of campaigns that have brought over a million dollars in revenue and loves helping businesses see how profitable they can be with the right combination of strong offer and persuasive words. I love that. When she's not immersed in words, Jo really likes to go sailing. She thinks nothing beats the sound of water along the hull of her yacht. I love it. It's pretty (laughs) nice. (laughs) It's pretty relaxing. How often do you go sailing? Actually, this year, not so much because um, the yacht's kind of a, well, she's 64 foot. And so we had events lined up for Sydney Hobart, etc. People from Europe sending money to come and participate and then, yeah. you know, COVID. So yeah. anyway, but she's pretty cool. Wow, yes. that's cool. Well, so my partner is the, the seriously good sailor and I just jump on and say, make it go faster. <laughs> <laughs> You're there to cut up oranges and make bagels and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, <Just kidding. laughs> no, it's, it's good fun. Keeps Sounds like fun. I yeah. get too seasick, so it wouldn't be good for me. Yeah, we'll have to. Have to see about that. <laughs> so, Joe, I'd love to hear more about your story and why you love copywriting and words so much. Tell us how you got into this whole field and you know what you love about it. I think probably the written word is good for introverts, and yep. you know I, I like getting out and being with people, but I'm pretty happy in my own company as well. So I guess it serves really well there. So. I've got more years than I want to own up to. It'll show my age as far as editing we all. books and community magazines and all that sort of thing. And I've just seen the power of a good story and how, you know, people come up with tears in their eyes and go, thank you so much. That just changed everything. So, of yeah. course, copy includes writing for video and film as well. Yeah. But it gives you that versatility for people who maybe don't feel so great um, being in the limelight. If you want to be behind the scenes, you can still get some very, very powerful results and nobody has to see your face at all. So that's pretty cool. (laughs) And, you know, you brought up a really good point. I mean, a lot of people, you know, they want to express themselves creatively and they might not be ready to do that on video or audio, but they Mm -hmm. can do that through the written word. Some people are extremely good with the written word and extremely creative. So it's a great avenue for them to amplify and tweak their creativity if they channeled it through the written word. Definitely. It's, it's very strong. Um, and even in copywriting for profit, we'd have people from agencies, they, they'd come in and they just say, look, I'm just not a writer. And I just, first of all, tell them to wash their mouth out. <laughs> it's, okay. it's not a matter of waiting for that muse to drape herself over the, well, for old people, you know what a filing cabinet is. It's, yeah. it's just rubbish. It's just, you have something to say that people need to hear and you need to get that message to them. And to me, it's as, as practical as just getting your housework done. It just needs doing. So once we change that mindset and teach people how to see who they're speaking to and bring in that empathy, it suddenly becomes easy for them. So there's still a bit of work involved, obviously, but it flows much better. So that that kind of makes really good sense. I mean, if you try and think about who your audience is, who you're writing to, what problem are you trying to solve? Mm. That already is half the battle won. Yes. If you think you're sitting there with just a screen in front of you, then you're looking at it the wrong way. You need to be thinking about the person you're communicating with. Yeah, I love that. So true. And you mentioned storytelling. I mean, that's a word that's been 
thrown and done to death since <laughs> they most ready to burn that word. <laughs> oh, it's like pivot, it's like another word we can burn. Yeah, crush it, skyrocket, smash uh, yeah, it, kill yeah, it, exactly. Kick it know. to the curb, all those lovely words. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I do, I love the concept. Storytelling is incredible. Like I'm a photographer, storytelling is involved in photography. Storytelling mm. has been around since the beginning of time. You know, everything we do involves a story and every communication that sound is has a story in it. it that's what keeps us engaged so mm. i'd love to hear your take on that yeah i actually put together a module that i can have your listeners they can access it for free if you like because there's not enough training in digital marketing on story most people use feature films as examples and that's that's just discouraging when you're sitting down trying to write an ad Yep. So in it, I've got some examples. They're video ads, but obviously scripted, but they're ads, not movies. So, and we go through the different story arcs there, but basically it's the old thing. Everybody likes to hear about somebody succeeding or overcoming an obstacle or being in a place that they wish they were at yeah. and thinking, oh my goodness, that's possible. So it's really just that. It's that okay. simple. That so true. Of- even to the point of like, even using the one word or a couple of words, do you feel like this? Are you like this? And then people say, wow, it sounded like you really wrote that for me. You were speaking directly to me. Yes, Just but if you write that in an ad, you'll get it shut down immediately for calling people out on Facebook. They're such snowflakes. <laughs> 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 you can't start an ad like that. But what you can do is flip it around and say, people in this position find this and just turn it around to that third person a little bit and then you get it through so that's all right (laughs) so let's start i kind of want to go a bit high level and i mean give us your insight into the psychology and the mindset behind why copywriting is so important these days why do we have to care I would suggest that it never stopped being important i think it's become a buzzword with young entrepreneurs Um, I did see one entrepreneur recently on Instagram who was talking about the power of referrals in businesses though it had just been discovered. It was pretty cute. He was very earnest (laughs) Um, and talking about protecting, you know, doing a good job with your customers so that you get referrals. So I think there are a lot of young digital marketers who have heard the word and thought that it was something exciting and new or revived when copywriting, again, the word is, has become a bit ridiculous. It's just communicating with people and usually that means in the written form so again there's so much sort of mystery being whipped up about the skill and that's actually rubbish it's a skill that anybody can learn and the power of it is that you're dealing with humanity's fears and desires and dreams and that's where the power comes from because that's what motivates people to act to either run towards something or away from it so really, you're just pressing those buttons with people. And I like to do it in a way where it's a product or service that's actually good for them. I yeah. mean, you can use words to sell anything, but it's nice if you do it for something that's reasonable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're playing with those core emotions of humanity, I suppose. Yeah, it's, it's the it's, cleanest it's way to describe You're looking that. for those trigger points. Yeah, yeah. So obviously with the psychology, you know, you could get into the whole structure of a landing page where you've got to get someone's attention and state the problem up front and then make them feel like it's not their fault because obviously they're not idiots. They've tried before. Why your, why your offer is different to everything they've tried before and how, how risk-free it is. All those things that, that the fears that people have in their mind and you just sort of lock them down one after the other so that it becomes a no-brainer for them to go, yep, I'll give it a go. Um, there are definitely... There's definitely flows that you can work through to make sure that you've covered all those bases so that you take the fear away from people and build that trust. Um, and that's, yeah, again, quite simple flows that have been whipped into some secret strategy that everybody wants to sell. Yeah, <laughs> so, absolutely. and again, that's what I'm about, I suppose, in copywriting for profit is demystifying it and just bring it back to reality so that it's doable for people. Because the reality is if you own a business, whether you're a marketer or not, you have to get newsletters out you have to help people look at what your offer is and decide to buy it therefore you need to be able to convey that message if you can write that down you're a step ahead instead of having to get someone else to do it all the time it gives you flexibility on time and cost and all that sort of thing and i, and I think so the, the more basic you do it, skill the better you, you get yeah the more you do it yeah. the, the better you get it's a basic skill that you just should pick up where you can just address the pain that somebody's got 
dig in a little bit to really bring it to life and then offer them the solution that's nice and clear. It's so, yeah. you know, the, the psychology is actually very, very simple. Yeah, yeah. And here's a great question. I mean, a lot of people will get caught up with words, particular words. <laughs> Do you think that those words are important or is it more the underlying structure of the how you orchestrated that whole sentence or phrase or is that word going to make such a big difference in whether I change that word for that word? I think the words are really important in terms of using the voice of who you're speaking to. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, nothing new. Fiction writers have been doing it for centuries. Yeah. They, they might write about a situation they've never lived in, but they observe the behaviour of those people in that community and how they speak and their slang and make it. So that's important because if you're speaking to a group of people, you want it to feel familiar so that they're, they're not sort of getting stalled by unfamiliar words. But yep. as far as... I, I guess I'd just say be careful not to use industry terms that people not in the industry wouldn't understand because, again, that's a barrier to them hearing you, keeping things very simple and, yeah, using the words that they would use. So yeah, yeah. just keeping it a really easy flow in that communication. Yeah, which brings up a really good point. I suppose really important these days as a marketer, as a digital marketer, as a promoter, we have to think about tailoring our copy to many different subgroups mm. can't be vanilla because as yes. you just mentioned if we use the wrong one, one term that might fit one subgroup or subculture but not be understood by another we've just mm. we've wasted that whole audience yeah the more you can dig into one subset of a community it they call it, it sounds a bit crude really the dog whistle kind of principle <laughs> you know with where your dog you know you whistle and your dog knows that that's you <laughs> yeah, yeah. so it's just that close connection i suppose so the more specific in anything you can be when you're presenting a solution to somebody the the easier it is for them to jump on board and part of that specific specificity <laughs> that's a nice word is again the words that they they would use so they're hearing it in a language that they understand that makes sense to them very easily and yeah. they can just go yeah that's good for That's me because it's, it's about touching them emotionally. That's what all this is about. Yeah. 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 It's just, you know, if I'm writing for a four wheel drive campaign, which I'm going to have to do soon, <laughs> I've been four wheel driving a few times, but I'll certainly be jumping into forums and looking at books on Amazon and magazines just to sort of get the lingo and the yeah. terms and the problems that they face. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, we've got one client who's just starting now who do horse grooming products and within the horse grooming industry, there are probably, 50 subsets that Jenny was reeling off between dressage and hacks and wow. racing and your Shetland pony in the backyard. And I was getting lost, you know, so we were talking there about being quite broad to the horse community yep. because unless they've got ad budget to test every single one, we're going to keep the copy at that higher level that any yeah. horse owner will resonate with. So, yeah. you know, how to keep the coat shining and the mozzies off. And, yeah, because it's a balancing act between doing a lot of testing with different versions. Yes. Um, because that costs a lot. So it does. Ha act. Happily, um, the algorithms are getting more powerful, it seems, by the year. And yeah. so if you put a few basic ingredients in, it pretty much goes, yeah, I've got you. I'll go and find the right people. Yeah. But again, once it finds the right people, it needs to be a language those people um, resonate with. So. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, where what platforms do you feel um, do you use the most in terms of where your copy goes? So in our agency, um, and I think we've got about 70 other agencies coming to us for copy on demand as well wow. at the moment, just a la carte orders to fill in gaps for them. Wow. So mostly it's Facebook, Instagram, Google. Yeah. Um, so Google ads and search and display. Yep. Some YouTube, but mostly still Facebook, Instagram. Um, we've done some LinkedIn as well. But because a lot of small businesses find the LinkedIn budgets have to be a bit higher, they're yes. a bit hesitant to start there. And so they tend to stick with the organic, which is understandable. So. Exactly. So, yeah, it seems to be still the powerful uh, core grunt of yep. most people's campaigns. Yep. Um, because yeah. it's, so, it's still quite cost effective to advertise on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, it is. The costs have certainly increased over the last three years that we've been doing it, but yeah, yeah. it's still damn good value for what you get. <laughs> yeah. But I suppose a lot of people, you know, would still, people should still remember 
that writing good copy is just as important for your organic campaigns as well. Totally, it's everything. It's right it's down everything. to your cookie notice on your website yep. and your everything. terms and conditions. Yep. And your I've email seen, signature, everything. I'm trying to remember the banking brand, actually. There's one banking brand that was doing a fabulous job of their copy and they just had every facet nailed and I should go find them because it's one of those things you read early in the morning and yep. you forget to keep a record of. But for a dry brand like a bank to yep. do such a good job and bring some humanity into it was just Brilliant. Um, I even noticed, and this is not political, but uh, Jackie Lambie, independent reporter, I threw a donation at her a few months ago and the thank you note, you know, was beauty, mate, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just just in the lingo of, you know, I guess that old fashioned Oka Aussie yep. and it suits her personality. So it's, you know, good synchronizing there. <laughs> Absolutely. Very important. Yeah. I mean, do, you, do you ever get tired of reading and looking at words and saying, oh, I can't take it anymore. Let's stop. I need a break. I'm not looking, I'm not looking at a keyboard from 24 sometimes hours. Sometimes when I've had to do, sometimes we get a rush of people wanting stuff done and yeah. I go three days where you're just writing commercial stuff for a whole lot of different econ brands from yeah. pillows to, you know, bladder problems to whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> debt, debt, debt consolidation or oh passion, gosh. the whole gamut we do. Yeah. So you can... You do have to go and fill your own well a little bit and just go and, you know, jump in the pool and yeah, just stop writing. Watch something stupid on telly, yeah, some watch old a cop show or something, you know. Else. Yeah, it's just and just <laughs> to get a little bit of a change of angle because otherwise I'm really conscious with everybody who comes to us that behind that order, like somebody might order two ads, which is not a big job. Yeah. But behind that is a brand that's wanting to build and grow and there's a family behind that and people yeah. trying to build their dreams. So we don't take it lightly and we try to start fresh and go okay let's just put the best job out there for them really? but yeah you do have to protect your space a bit like yeah. uh, with my team I don't have them just writing all day um, I was in contact with one guy who was he's a very successful copywriter and he actually got stomach ulcers he was writing hundreds of headlines a day wow. for months on end oh. and it really ruined his health it's so true. like anything too much of a good thing you've just got to yeah. ease up a bit yeah wow. So I mean, I'd love to get some uh, tips from you for the audience mm. because everybody always says, I sit down at my computer, I want to write something or I want to create something and I go blank. Yeah. Like, I'm not creative. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah. So what are some great ways for them to beat writer's block or start yeah. moving into that creative realm and enjoying it? Yeah, just firstly pulling out the core elements and sometimes it can start with something as simple as if I just want to tell my brain it's time to write an ad, yep. I, I have a format where I just put headline and underneath I've got maximum 25 characters because I know that won't get cut off on any Facebook format. Right. Newsfeed link description, maximum 30 characters, ad copy. I will just put those headings in for a start. You put, a, put a framework Just that around. framework on the page. So it's not an empty page, which is great. Always love that. Chuck the URL in if you have to. Just to yep. <laughs> Then go to the landing page. You go, okay, what's the offer? And what are people saying about it? So you've got the social proof right there, which helps me go, okay, this looks pretty good. So yeah. once I'm on board with it, I can go, okay, how do I present this to people? So yeah. again, it's starting with real people and what they say about it. Um, and then also always, always benefits before features. So how using this for the five senses, how will people feel? What does it smell like, taste like? What's it like to touch? You know, I like that. what pain will it relieve? Before you go into anything to do with the features, that's retargeting or, you know, when you want to justify your, your decision with the logic kind of time. I like it. Definitely not in your first approach. So whether it's the top of a landing page or your top of funnel ads, you're going for the, the emotional and the sensory side of what you're selling. Yep. Um, and that works pretty well. So once I start to get a flow from what people are saying about it or the, or the owner's backstory, if I don't, I'm always interested in people's stories. Mm -hmm. I've got a, a copywriting client, Pedram and Basiri, who owns Solex in Washington, D.C. Wow. It's a float spa. She was an architect. And then she fell in love with the benefits of floating, mental, spiritual, physical, amazing mm -hmm. benefits. As you can imagine, in D.C. right now, they've got COVID issues with lockdowns and space like everyone's dealing with. Yeah. And then they've also had a lot of the streets shut down. <laughs> She's right in it. So we were just talking the other day and she said, look, you know, we're the only light on it when you come down our street. We're determined to stay open because we've got locals coming in in tears saying, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're open. This is really helping. 
So when we did her emails, we were telling the story of how she started the business and then the feedback from customers saying, this is great to hear how you put it together. Thank you for sharing that. You know, it just builds that engagement. It's just amazing story. again, how important that story is. People love the backstory. Yeah, we connect with people. So they love the why. Sure they start, yeah. yeah, you go to the person and why did they start it or yeah. what problem did they want to solve? And that way you start to flow into the ad pretty quickly from gotcha. there. Gotcha. Mm. So kind of think about the benefits, think about the why you're doing something, think about how you're really going to help your target market or your customer mm. and maybe start with just a loose framework that gives you a guideline and then everything will start to fall in place rather than to think you have a blank canvas and you don't know where to start. Yeah, if you're really stuck, get a client quote, a customer quote and use a snippet of that as a headline, you know, yeah. and then you can go, oh, I've started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I kind of do that a lot as well when I'm drafting podcast episodes or whatever. I take a sentence or a something that someone's given me mm. and I use that as my, my base point. And then yeah. I start to get creative on top of it and play with and it. And then you don't have trouble with it, do you? It yeah. just comes out. Exactly. But you need that, that little bit at the beginning to give you that edge, you know, something to start with. Yeah. And if you're not sure about your own writing skills and you're sitting there going, whatever I write, it's going to be crap. If you start with somebody's endorsement, you've already got something on the paper. Yeah, so true. It just helps beat that rubbish, you know, out of your head. <laughs> yeah, so true, so true. I mean, and what about um, if you had to give somebody or, you know, a bit of an insight into what are the, some of the things that will really make a difference in increasing the engagement rate or the conversion yes. rate of their copy? You know, there must be two or three things that can really make a difference if you keep an eye on them. The one biggest thing is make it about them and not you. Yep. Just don't make it about the brand. Um, make it about the community that yep. they're speaking to and so that true. will flip your conversions like you wouldn't believe so true yep. yeah so that's very very powerful and then um, I guess your strong headlines and your strong intro are pretty pretty massive factors yeah so yeah. that you're hooking people in um, yeah. we can play with headlines I was just saying to you before the podcast I was looking at some subject lines for an email campaign we did for Chelsea Jean one of our clients who's a naturopath and I didn't want the lead up to her was for her Christmas campaign. Yep. I didn't want it all to be sell, 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 you know, oh, gee. So I literally just threw one in there that um, one was called kicking back. Just that's all the subject line had. And it made, right. I think, about $3,000. Wow. Another one was just lazy Sundays with a kiss hug. Yep. And it bought in 1300 bucks. It was not even a call to action button. It was literally just a message to her community saying, you know what, you're fantastic. Take a bit of time out for Take you. Take a break. That's Enjoy yourself. all it was. And people still went and bought from that anyway. Yep. Yep. So playing with your subject lines is pretty important and getting people to open. And then once they're open, you want them to click. You want them to do something. Yep. So everybody, you can brag about open rates all you like, but it's also nice to have some good click-through rates and, yeah. and some good revenue, which you can measure in email platforms now quite yep. well. It's yep. and pretty cool. I suppose uh, call to actions are important there? Yeah, definitely. Some kind of a call to action? Yeah, people worry that they're being pushy, but... It's actually not a problem. People want, we're so busy. Our brains are so cluttered. We just want to know what to do next is yeah, the simplest way to put yeah, it. So, true. so just share, Denise Duffield Thomas puts this really well. Just share what you know and make an offer. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. So share your offer. What is it? Here's what to do next. And people do. Yeah. Just go, oh, thank you. Yeah. Off, off they go. <laughs> if you're interested, if it suits you, great. If you don't, no problem at all. Yeah, yeah. We're not, so, we're not, we're not tying you uh, to the ground. You just, it's your choice. Keeping it to one thing is yeah. also very powerful. Um, I remember I had clients that were doing selling cosmetic fashion lenses a couple of years ago. And we did get really nice 12 times return on ad spend with them. But they wanted to run six different specials in one ad copy. You know, depending how many sets you bought, you get this discount. Yeah. Wow. And I said at the start, I think it'll be too many. Okay, well, let's run it, whatever. But it was literally the first or second links that ever got clicked anyway. So just one thing is enough for people really to deal with. And yeah keeps things a bit easy yeah oh, i love it i mean yeah. so so true and i really think those points are so valid and something that hits home for me is that these days being that everything is so visual as well mm. i think it's really important for people to make sure that they have just an eye on the how it looks you know on the font how mm. is it bold is it is it the right color mm. is it engaging from a visual point of view, because we're so visual now on all these platforms and mm. all these different, uh, wherever we, we have our copy. What do you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I'm surprised when I see some people I know who are making millions every year online and their emails come out, 
they're plain text format. They don't even have paragraph breaks a lot, <laughs> which shocks me. And the, I have never been able to see how their emails are converting. I'm not on their team, but it surprises me. And they've been around long enough and they're growing. So I figure, well, they can't be terrible. But I think it's really nice to just keep things clean, loading as quickly as you, as you can. Make sure your housekeeping's done. Make sure that when people click a link, it goes to the right place. You know, so many people don't check. Like when we're on the boat, when we talk about putting up the sail, you're always looking at the other end of the mast. You're not just down there grinding. Um, otherwise, you can break the grinder because there's so much tension on it. You don't know you're there already. And it's, right. <laughs> you've got to look at the other end of what you're doing. And this is what I'm always saying to people when I work with them is check every link. Um, send a test email. Make sure it's real. You'll always find something. I'm so tempted when I'm in a hurry to just go, oh, no, it's fine. Yeah. The one time you do that, it won't be fine. <laughs> Check your Google Analytics is clicked on in your, in your email tracking. You know, just get things right and make sure that your buttons are linked to the right area. And that's half the battle. <laughs> I find it's great to just kind of say, okay, just take a break for a second. Take a breath. Yeah. <laughs> back, reread it. Okay, there's a mistake. There's a mistake. There's a mistake. There's actually a really nice principle. If, if you've got the time to do that, there's a nice way to think about it too. You know how you have your, especially as a business owner, you have your days where you feel really on fire and you can go for it. And other days you're just a bit tired or, and it's actually really nice if you can put something away for another day to check it because you're going to be in a different mood and you're going to see okay. it differently. Okay. So if you can give yourself that grace, it's a good thing to do. Very good so thing. True. And actually that's something that we do as photographers, you know, oh. as creative or artistic photographers, when we do creative projects, we always leave our photographs to marinate, to digest, even for ideally for a month, if you can, if it's something creative, yeah, nice. personal work. Yeah. Because yeah. I guarantee you, when you come back after a month, the emotional connection to that situation yes. in which you took those photos have, has gone mm -hmm. and you see the photos for what they really are. And it, it, the same applies here. You know, you, when you're in, 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 in that emotional um, momentum, mm -hmm. you sometimes don't see what is really, how it will be received. Yes. I think that's a really good point. That's very good. In fact, I built a landing page um, a couple of days ago over the weekend and it's for a property. And so I kind of went, oh, domain have got red. Let's use red. Let's, you know, put it out there, slammed it all up. Everyone went, yeah, that's great. And then I haven't launched it yet. And I'm looking at it going, that looks really screamy. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're right. Go back and have another you look. get caught up in the whole momentum of it all and excitement. Yeah. <laughs> and you, get, you know, that these ideas are flowing, but then you say later on, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's just looking really shouty and I'm just going, oh, come yeah. on. <laughs> so it's really interesting. Great little tip for anyone in the creative industry. Yes. Just always kind of let your work digest, marinate, air out for a day or two at least. Yeah. And then you might look at it with a different light. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's a good, very, very good thing good. to do. <laughs> so, um, Joe, I'd love to know, and I'd love the users and the, the viewers to know a bit more about how you work and what you do. So. Maybe tell us a bit more about your agency. Oh, well, I have, I do have a full service agency, McKee Creative, and we work with clients really for the long term. When we take a client on, we like to stay with them. We've got clients starting their fourth year with Life us. Life without parole, huh? It is. <laughs> we don't actually lock them into any contracts. It's just month by month. We just say okay. 30 days if you want to go, but I'd rather them be with us because they want to be there. So that's cool. Okay. But we really take that mental load off them by, it actually started, we started doing just Facebook ads. But then you find that the website isn't ready for traffic and not loading and all the rubbish. And then they want a bot and you've got to charge them more. And it just becomes this messy thing. So what we do now is we just look after it for them. Right. Basically, we just say, look, at the very minimum, we don't take clients unless we can do the SEO as well, because I think that's very important long-term foundational work. And But we look after their Google ads, their Facebook and Instagram. If they need a messenger bot built, we do it. Um, they need a site built we just did two of this week we host it whatever right. and it just means that we've got that big picture and we can look at the whole business growth and spot opportunities with them yeah. for ways to do things better it means that we know that the ad campaign is tied in really nicely with the email marketing and you know as best as humanly possible it's all running really well Fantastic. so that's a really nice thing to do and then as part of that we've had other agencies start to ask for copy. So about a year ago, we started your ads on demand, just an order form. You can say, I want this and that, and they get it in three days. So that's all sorted. And then we've started training people in house with copywriting for profit because it's just right. a good investment long term for people. So, really? And so you're working with clients all over the world? Yeah, yeah, it's nice. And it keeps it interesting cool. too. I, 
um, for me, it's not so much a niche as in, you know, we're in this industry or that industry. It's more just brands that are doing things that we can be really proud of and, you know, clients that are willing to do the work in building the business to the point where we're having to slow down and spend on some of them because they're packing products as quickly as they can and we need their families not to fall apart with the pressure of it. Oh, <laughs> so the, the, to, the copy's doing so well. Well, it's not just a copy, of course. I mean, Hench does a good job on the media buying and yeah. with, you know, it's it's a good team effort. But it is really important not to just have things break because they grow too quickly. Okay. Um, yeah, you've got to think about the people behind it as well. Yeah, you hear that a lot with marketing in general, that people, if they, they market too well and then their systems are not in place and mature enough to handle the load. So hmm. it's really important to make sure that you can do both. Yes, and even if it's a digital product, um, some of the campaigns that I wrote for over the past year were for other agencies and for their clients. Yeah. They did very, very well. Um, I know one lady had hoped to do 700000 in the year and she did She did that within the first four months, you know, paid off her mortgage and wow. selling courses, Australian lady. It's really lovely that they did that. Yeah. They're still going to have customer service issues though because more people are asking more questions. So even if you don't have to pack a bottle in the shed, you know, it's easy to say we're just selling digital products, but there are always growth um, hurdles to be overcome. So. Yeah, there's still always going to be support in some way. Yeah, so I think it's really important for clients to have a goal. That, okay, let's have big goals, and we do, and, and it's possible to get there. Um, but why are we setting those goals? Is it just because, hey, we want to have a $10 million in two-year business, or is it because, you know, you want to pay off your house and spend more time with your kids, whatever the yeah. freedom means to them, you know? Buy a yacht. <laughs> 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 yeah <laughs> so joe i mean i'd love to do some storytelling in a way i'm going to use that word just for fun um, i'd love a little case study or a story about one of your customers that might have come to you and they were struggling with their ad campaign or their whatever they had to write and the copy yeah. just, they couldn't get it right and you took them on and all of a sudden things turned around and it's remarkable <laughs> i'd love to hear a story about how important and how you made a difference through copy. It's so much fun. It's We've got um, one of our clients, Jessica and Andrea Curtis, who own Easy Exercising. Okay. They came to me um, with, they bought the rights to the old Shape Master Power Assisted Equipment that you might've heard about 30 years ago. Yeah, floating around Australia. So used to watch them on those late night TV. Yeah. So they've got the Australian rights to that. Now you can imagine a Facebook ad saying, come and have a session on a power assisted machine. You go, oh yeah, you know. <laughs> So that was a bit scary. So we talked about it and we called it Easy Exercising for the Over 50s. Was, and I've got to stop calling them oldies because I'm going to be 50 this year. So that's a bit scary. <laughs> but, and the tagline was laughter and a cup of tea included. Right. And the offer is a free trial session because once people get in there and meet Andrea and Jessica and feel the community, they are, they're like there for life. You know, we've started a little Facebook group for each clinic. They've started their third clinic just after they got back out of lockdown, which is great. Right. Um, planning to open a fourth one soon. Yep. And literally people uh, phoning them saying you saved my life because they didn't expect, first of all, to make such good friends. They won't move to the next suburb until these girls open their clinic there. Wow. Um, they're starting to get NDIS people come through as well and finding all sorts of things like Parkinson's and um, people with mobility issues. It's really, really helping them. So Incredible. it's pretty exciting. And just by calling it easy exercising and having that laughter and a cup of tea included, I think we had to drop the cup of tea though because Jessica ran out of time to put the kettle on. <laughs> but building that community and they they give each other a hard time and tease each other and it's not fancy like if you look at their site it's not fancy at all in fact we need to improve the load speed pretty quick <laughs> um and but we've got the their clients making videos again nothing glamorous but they'll just say you know hey i can pick up my little dog and i couldn't do that last month and so people as seth godin says people like us do things like this Yep. So people in these suburbs, we can only advertise um, about 10 mile max from each clinic because they don't travel far. Yeah, um, Got to keep the lead costs down over time, which yep. it's doing. But they're seeing videos of people like them and they're going, oh, I could do that. You know. And these videos just popping up on Facebook and Instagram in that radius? Yeah, yeah. Wow, we? And it's just converting so well. It's a bit of a problem because they share it with their friends and so then we get people going, oh, are you in Perth? And they're going, oh, not yet. You know, so there's a whole list of people saying, are you here, are you here, are you here? They're building the list. And when, and actually, when we didn't know where to open the next clinic, the newest ones at Wellington Point in Brisbane, and we were not sure about demographics. And so what we did was just make a little messenger bot. Gosh, I think we only spent 250 bucks running it. It wasn't a big project. But we just put a thing in saying, hey, if you've been looking to do this, 
let us know where you'd like to see it. And we had about 12 options that people could click on the poll on the survey in the bot. And so that helped them make that business decision as to know when to open. And that was fun. You know? How amazing. I mean, to me, it still just blows my mind how just a little bit of copy or the right copy can make all the difference in the engagement. Oh, and it can be so simple. Sometimes we just put a funny meme up and yeah. everybody, you know, like it'll be the, you know, the meme of the old ladies dancing in the kitchen, one yeah. of those, you know. <laughs> Um, Incredible, and and that can go nuts and bring inquiries. So, yeah, just giving yeah. people a good time, making them feel like it's going to be easy, and then they'll come and have a go. Yeah, sensational. The power of the human of the of the written word. Yeah, fascinating. Well, Joe, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. You know, I could go on forever talking about this kind of stuff because I love getting into all the creativity. Have to knock sure everybody's ear off. <laughs> but um, really, been amazing to chat to you about this, and you know, I think that. Anybody who's interested in learning more about what you guys do and if they need help with their copy, they should definitely get in touch. Do you mm. want to tell us where to, how to find you? Well, if they want to learn, copywritingforprofit.com. And the, the nice thing about the course is it includes live edit calls. So oh, we well. jump on once a week, they bring what they're doing and we literally, everyone can learn from each other. And I didn't know how it would go. I didn't know if I could think quickly enough, but it worked really well. So it's a very hands-on um, course. Awesome. There's no, there's no enrolling and not doing it because I'd probably come and slap you. <laughs> um, yeah, so that that works well. Copywritingforprofit.com, or if they really want the full agency treatment, McKeeCreative.store, S-T-O-R-E. Beautiful, and I'll make sure I put those uh, links yeah. in the show notes, and obviously yeah. LinkedIn, Facebook, and yeah. uh, everywhere else where good uh, social media is found. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well done. And anything you want to leave us with before we finish up with regards um, to copy or creativity? If you find yourself saying I'm not a writer, just wash your mouth out and go and have a go. Have a go. So you can, just, you can just do like it. anything else. Start. Yep. Just start. Just try. Yep. Be amazed <laughs> with the result. Absolutely. Yes. Well done. Well, thank you so much again, Joe. Really been a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed our chat and I think the audience will as well. Um, so if everybody out there, hope you had a fantastic one. Have a great day and we'll see you back on Friday for episode 178. Bye for now. Thanks, Jeremy.